The New York Times and many other news outlets recently reported on the benefits of low-dose oral minoxidil for hair loss. I have been prescribing oral minoxidil to men and women in my practice for many years. Minoxidil was introduced in the early 1970s as a treatment for hypertension or high blood pressure. It's rarely used for those purposes today because we have better blood pressure controlling medications. Hypertrichosis or increased hair growth was a common side effect seen in patients taking oral minoxidil, including the appearance of more hair on the head. But because there were serious side effects from the use of high dose oral minoxidil, there were attempts to create a topical formulation. And this is what was first tested for hair loss. The idea was to get benefits for one's hair without being subjected to the side effects of high-dose oral minoxidil. The 2% topical formulation was first marketed to men in 1986 in the United States. So who is oral minoxidil good for? Most commonly, it's used to treat patterned hair loss, such as male pattern hair loss and female pattern hair loss. It can also be used in chronic telogen effluvium, traction alopecia, alopecia areata, chemotherapy-induced hair loss, scarring alopecia, and eyebrow and beard regrowth. In terms of the basic mechanism of oral minoxidil, we covered that in our original video on this topic. But there are several roles that oral minoxidil plays in promoting hair regrowth. One is that it's a vasodilator, so that increases the oxygen levels for the hair follicles. Another is that it promotes the antigen phase of the hair cycle, and that is the growth phase of the hair cycle. It also reduces inflammation, and that's why it can sometimes be used for scarring alopecia. It stimulates the release of growth factors, and there have been some studies that have shown some potential anti-androgenic effects as well. Overall, oral minoxidil increases hair diameter and hair length. It basically takes hairs that are more in the villus form, which are finer miniaturized hairs, and transitions them closer to a terminal state, which is a more mature type of hair follicle. Some ask, how long will it be until I start to see the effects of this medication? The initial clinical response may take at least three months of treatment. Some people ask me, how long should I be on oral minoxidil? And the answer is, as long as you want it to continue to help you with your hair. It is something that you need to take for a prolonged period of time and once you stop the medication the effects that you gain from the medication slowly start to diminish so you must keep taking oral minoxidil to maintain the effects of it subscribe to our channel if you aren't already to get oral minoxidil you need a prescription from a doctor and most doctors are not comfortable prescribing this medication now you don't have to wait to get a consultation with me we are offering oral minoxidil for men and women through a digital pharmacy and a prescription service. It's easy to get the medication shipped to your door within the United States. Go to feelconfident.com to sign up. We've been working on bringing you prescription hair loss medications at a very low price so that people can afford it. So why is the oral form of minoxidil generally considered better than the topical formulation? For one, there is better regrowth of hair compared to the topical. It's just a much more potent formulation of the medication. The bioavailability in our bloodstream is higher after taking the pill compared to putting the topical solution or foam on the scalp. Oral minoxidil is used once a day compared to topical minoxidil, which is applied twice a day. With oral minoxidil, there is no scalp irritation. There is no unpleasant hair residue. There's also a lower risk of temporary shed because as you know, with topical minoxidil, you can get several weeks of shedding that occurs right after starting the medication. And lastly, oral minoxidil is cheaper than its topical counterpart. In terms of dosing, for high blood pressure management, the original dose of oral minoxidil was given at 10 to 40 milligrams. The hair loss dosing is much lower, and that helps reduce side effects. In women, the recommended dose is 0.25 milligrams to 1 0.25 milligrams. In men, the recommended dose of oral minoxidil is 1 milligram 
to five milligrams. In general, the higher the dose, the better it works, though you also increase the potential for side effects as you increase the dose. And oral minoxidil can be taken with or without food. Keep in mind that minoxidil is only approved for androgenic alopecia as a topical formulation, not in its oral form. Oral minoxidil is, however, approved by the FDA for treating hypertension. So oral minoxidil used for hair loss is considered off-label use. As far as side effects go, they can be divided into mild and more serious forms. The serious side effects are extremely rare in the low-dose version of oral minoxidil. Mild side effects include hypertrichosis, usually on the face, which is again more hair growth, headache, dizziness, lightheadedness, leg swelling, and increased heart rate. For people who get lightheaded, it might be helpful to take the medication at bedtime. In terms of serious side effects, there's fluid retention that could occur and pericardial effusion, which is fluid building up around the heart. Side effects are dose dependent. So you lower the dose and the side effects diminish. You increase the dose and the side effects worsen. One study found that increasing the dose of oral minoxidil by one milligram increased the risk of having hypertrichosis by 17.6% and cardiovascular symptoms by 4.8%. In terms of hypertrichosis as a side effect, it most commonly occurs on the face. And the most affected areas on the face are the sideburns and the temples. Now, for some people, that side effect could be beneficial, but for other people, it can present a nuisance. Hypertrichosis could be managed by either lowering the dose of oral minoxidil or having the patient go through some hair removal procedures such as laser hair removal. This continuation of oral minoxidil due to side effects is quite rare. It was found to be about 1% in a multi-center study of over 1,400 patients. The following are contraindications to taking oral minoxidil, meaning that if you have any of these things, you shouldn't take the drug. One, pheochromocytoma. Two, pregnancy, and three is breastfeeding. As far as relative contraindications, these include hypotension, which is low blood pressure, and any type of cardiac comorbidity. These have to be handled with care and need the approval of a cardiologist prior to taking oral minoxidil. So what happens if you stop taking oral minoxidil? The termination of treatment results in progressive hair loss. You lose what you've gained, and this occurs over the period of several months after stopping oral minoxidil. But it is okay to miss some doses here and there. I know some patients get very worried if they miss a dose or two. That is not a concern. Once again, go to feelconfident.com if you're interested in therapy for hair loss. And I'll see you in the next video.